Why am I sitting in a pile of straw and wood chips? Because we're gonna grow mushrooms right here and I'm gonna show you how to do it today on Nature's Always Right. Today I'm gonna to show you how to grow your own wine cap or King Strafaria mushrooms. Now this is a mushroom that I'm excited to tell you about because you can do this technically anywhere in the world. Now there might be easier places and harder places to do this, but this is accessible. Growing mushrooms is something I really think you should consider not only as a food source for yourself and your family, but also as a business. To me, market gardening, microgreens, and mushrooms are the top three entry points into regenerative agriculture, um, agriculture in general, because they have such a low barrier to entry, high profit margins. So where do you wanna put your wine caps? What possible locations can you do these in? So you wanna do this in a place that has partial shade. So on the north side of a building's a good place, the north side of a greenhouse, underneath a bunch of trees. Um, some dappled sunlight is completely fine. The thing that you're trying to avoid really is just the beating sun down on top of all of your wood chips or your straw. That would dry it out and then stop the mycelium from growing or even kill it if it went on for long enough. You can do this in your garden, in the rows between your garden beds. I've seen people do um, you know, the wood chip pathways and they'll inoculate the wood chip pathways with King Strafaria. So it's fantastic for market gardening. Um, if I was gonna do it on a production model though, I would make just garden beds that are made out of straw and wood chips and then inoculate those. That would just be a much more efficient system than doing it in the pathways of your market garden. Um, you can do it on top of grass. If you, have, if you do that, I recommend putting down a layer of cardboard just like we do when we start our no-till garden beds to help snuff the grass and then do your straw and then wood chips on top of that. I've chosen this area because it's right next to my mushroom logs. It also, right behind me, it's a very flat area. It gets a little bit more sunlight, uh, has a little bit more opening for rainfall. So the next step up for me to prep, I'm gonna cut down all of these little tree saplings, the muscadine grapes, vines that are going everywhere, get rid of those, then put my straw on top of the leaves here. The leaves are a great little carbon source, but they're just not, they don't get super wet like straw does, they don't have a ton of food like wood chips do. So it's subpar, but it's still gonna be fantastic for our, our mulch. I might not have enough wood chips actually. So what I'll do is um, combine wood chips and leaves on the top to help cover the sun and keep in moisture. Now you don't need straw to do the wine caps. You can just use wood chips, but I highly recommend that you do get straw. And when you get your straw, be sure that it is spray free. You can ask your local farmer that question. Do you use herbicides? Uh, you can also look for organic straw. Sometimes that's possible, but that's pretty rare to find organic straw. But be careful because there's a lot of herbicides that are sprayed onto these crops. Uh, so you don't want that ending up in your mushrooms. I've actually purchased mushroom compost that had an herbicide in it before. And when I learned that, it really caused me to stop eating any mushrooms from the store, uh, especially if they're not organic because of the substrate source. So by growing our own mushrooms, we are controlling the substrate. Now this substrate straw is recommended because this can be fed on very quickly by the mycelium. So the straw, just like in compost making, a straw is more of our quicker, carbon that's going to accelerate the heat. A wood chip is gonna be a, a, a longer term carbon that uh, slowly builds heat in a compost pile, but for the mushrooms, they're a long term carbon source as well. The area that you're gonna be placing this, you know, I'm gonna to try to stack my straw up, you know, eight to 12 inches. Soaking your straw is a really good idea to help the mycelium grow more quickly and successfully, just like all other biological life forms. Mushrooms need water in order to do their life processes. So I'm gonna soak this here and then spread it out on the ground. So you should soak your straw for 24 hours or even longer. You can go up to three days if you wanted. Um, I'm only gonna soak for probably about an hour or a couple hours, um, cause I don't have time. But the next week we're gonna get a bunch of rain. So I have no doubt that this will be able to get fully soaked. So if I lived in a dry climate that didn't get much rain, here are my suggestions to try if you wanna do this. So the main concern that we have is moisture control. If we lose the moisture, we lose the mushrooms. So if you don't get rain for five, six, seven, eight months, then that you need to bring water there, right? So you could do some sort of irrigation system. So like drip tape, like I've showed you in some of my videos over the tops of the beds. 
you could do a misting system over the top or some micro uh, little sprinklers uh, that go up and then shoot water around. That actually would be quite good. I would make sure that it's in 100% shade at all times. There's not direct sunlight hitting it um, just to really help prevent the drying out. I would create a structure over the top. You may even need to create a greenhouse over the top or you could use shade cloth, but greenhouse will create the most humidity, right? So you could do a poly low tunnel or you could do a caterpillar tunnel higher um, and you maybe would want to manage the plastic on the sides. You could lift them up. You would have to play with that to figure it out. You know, maybe have a foot of airspace and then it's just plastic all the way around and then you have some sort of misting system or micro sprinkler, sprinkler system um, inside that runs once a week or whatever is gonna be necessary to keep it moist. So just like when doing plants, we dig down in the soil to see how much moisture is in there to see if it needs water. So you'll be doing the same thing for your mushrooms. If you're in a dry climate, you really wanna soak these materials as long as you can as well because that initial soaking, just like in soil, if the soil's already wet, it's easy to accept more moisture. But if soil or straw, carbon completely dries out, it goes hydrophobic and it's very difficult to get water to penetrate and soak up in there. So that is gonna be the, some of the key points I think that you will need to do in a dry climate. Okay, so now let's talk about wood chips, probably the more important food source long-term. If you did a bed of just wood chips, they say it'll last about two to three years of fruiting, but you can also replenish the bed over time with more wood chips. Um, and if you feel like it, the spawn has gotten weak and it's just run out of life, you can always inoculate with more wine cap spawn in that same area and it'll keep it going. So when it comes to your wood chips, what type of wood chips do you want to use? Well, soft hardwoods are the best to use according to Field and Forest. And that's just because the breakdown process, the mycelium can get in there faster to start working it and getting it broken down. Now what I have here is mostly hardwood chips. That's fine. Um, it's recommended to soak your wood chips just like the straw and your mushrooms will just have an easier time getting in there and getting to work. Now I don't have a good wood chip source here. This is all from the forestry mulching that I had done in this area. So that's what I'm going to collect. Now to get your own wood chips, if you live in a suburban or a city area, it's very easy. Just go to chipdrop.com um, and you can get free drops. Or if you ever see a tree guy in your neighborhood, they're working. That's how in San Diego, I found my tree guy. He was out there with his crew working on a yard. And I said, hey, do you need a place to dump these chips? Come to my house and dump them. So that's a great way to get them. Are there any mulches that you shouldn't use? Well, I wouldn't use black walnut. Never use that in the garden either. And then conifer mulch should not be used as well, but conifers are totally fine to use in your garden. So before we add in the rest of our straw and the wood chips that we just collected, it's time to put out our mushroom spawn. And I got this mushroom spawn from fieldandforest.net. They are the best mushroom company in my opinion in North America. They are organic certified. Everything that they do that I've seen has just been the utmost quality. The information that they put out to their customers is fantastic. I'll put an article down below about wine caps for you guys on their website that has all their recommendations and just a great short little write up that has all the info that you need. So in that article, Field and Forest says that a 5.5 pound spawn will do about 50 square foot area. This is much bigger than 50 square foot, but I'm assuming that because the area that I live is so humid, hot, wet, I don't think it's gonna have a problem here spreading this spawn a little bit more thin. We'll see, this is my own experiment, but that's what I'm going to do. You should follow Field and Forest's recommendations if you want like the utmost harvest and, and all of that stuff. Um, all the recommendations that they gave for the mushroom logs and all that have been very accurate. So what I'm going to do is just do a really good job of breaking up this spawn so I can get the little spores out everywhere in here and it will take over. The straw is a fantastic quick food. That's gonna be the first thing that the mushroom feeds on to get going. And then um, as it starts to break down those wood chips more, it's gonna access the nutrients in there and get the wood chip nutrients, which will be, which will be the long-term food source and what I will add to this area, once a year, I'll probably add in more wood chips just to keep adding in a food source. So we're gonna sprinkle this out. We're gonna add in the rest of the straw, the wood chips, get it all wet, hope for some rain in the next week, 
and that's it. And then we'll just be waiting probably till next summer. That's when the wine caps will come up. Now, if I would have done this at a, the best time, I think to do this is in spring after your last frost, do this process and then you'll have mushrooms most likely by fall, which would be amazing, right? So, but you can do this right now if you're watching this video in August, you still have tons of time to get this set up. Um, you need to do it before your first frost. I'd say this is about 150 to 200 square feet. Um, I probably would have wanted one more of those 5.5 pound blocks for this big of an area. Um, but we'll see how this does. I'm kind of curious to see what will happen with this, a smaller amount of inoculant. So just doing this is getting that underneath. Our final step is just gonna be to walk over all this, compress it down. So just like in the garden, we want good seed to soil contact, right? So that seed will sprout. Well, the spawn is like a seed of the mushroom. Um, so if it's touching more surfaces of the carbon, there's more chances of it proliferating and establishing more quickly and successfully. Also getting a really good rain would help to compress things as well. So I'm gonna do about three times the amount of wood chips that you just saw me put out. Check out my email newsletter. There was an actual email that went along with this video.